all glorify his name. Oh, we glorify. We glorify. Oh, come
Technical, technical issues, and um, the reason why we want to get things right because we record everything we do, um, and it's important to always look back at posterity, to look back and say, "I had this some years ago, and I had this some years ago." So we are good to go. Um, I invited Pastor Nat to join us, and, and I spoke to him and told him so to speak on some few things before I before I come and take over. So please put your hands together and welcome to the night. Well, amen. amen. Yeah, it's like it's blowing me. <laughs> now I just want to thank God for the opportunity and uh, uh, to the bishop, the doctor, Pastor Yida Pilasad. Thank you, sir for the opportunity to just uh, stand and share um, what you have said. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I just want us to, uh, I know it's a, it's a men's meeting, but before we start, uh, if we can just uh, pray, I don't know, with a heart full of expectation. Um, I doubt pastor would have uh, called such a meeting for us to come in this place without there being a divine deposit that is gonna, I just sensed a, term, a, a supernatural shift, a tremendous shift that is gonna just take place in each and every man's works of their hands. There's just gonna be a tremendous shift. After, after tonight, there's, it's, you know, uh, I just, it's, it's, it's gonna be, a supernatural shift and you shall see it like uh, this man um, Hezekiah who said Lord if it is true that you are going to um, heal me let the sun dial turn a few degrees he knew it's easier to do it f in the f to go in, uh, in front but he says can you take it a little bit uh, 10 degrees backwards and I feel that God is going to really orchestrate a change of season. You, we are controlling time.
God is um, what we can learn. And I believe each and every time that we are here, we are always here. To, God gives us wisdom to be able to what? To do things. And um, there's one verse which always inspires me. If I don't uh, read it, it's because of time. Um, but some, Isaiah chapter 1 verse 17 says we must learn to do things well. We must learn to do things well. So each and every time um, when we are doing things, it's not about, uh, it will not come by divine osmosis. We have their principles and strategies and stratagems that we must put in place so that we can what, uh, run things well. So each and every, God will never give you a desire to get into a business or to be a professional uh, um, or to do any form of uh, assignment and expect you to fail. I'll repeat that again. God will never give us either a business, an assignment, and uh, anything, then expect us to fail. He has given us tools and um, wisdom to be able to, uh, to do things that, is, uh, that will exceed even our utmost imagination, our utmost desires. But the problem is not on the, I always say, when something is not happening the way it should happen, the problem is definitely not on the transmission end, but it, the problem is on the receiving end. So I must make sure that I recalibrate myself and be able to what? To fall in line and do things in the way that he has instructed us to do. Uh, one scripture, Proverbs chapter, Proverbs chapter 24, allow me to just read it from, uh, Proverbs chapter 24, verse 3. The Bible says, any enterprise in the Living Bible, it says, any enterprise is built by wise planning. And it becomes strong through common sense and profits wonderfully by keeping abreast of the facts. So it says any enterprise is built by wise planning and it becomes strong through common sense and then profits wonderfully by keeping abreast of the facts. So we're gonna need wise planning, we're gonna need to apply common, fence, common sense, uh, we're gonna need to keep abreast of the facts. Because if you do not keep abreast of the facts, I've seen now businesses uh, disappear just because they have failed to what? to keep abreast of the facts. And as we keep abreast of the facts, there are so many facts which we will not be able to even discuss in one uh, sitting like this, but there is a whole lot of things that are constantly changing. And if one is not aligned to what is happening, then you, what? you fail to, do, um, to ex excel in the thing that you must do. Why would any business exist? Why would any uh, firm exist? Whether you are, you're offering a service, why would it exist? It exists because there is a what? You're servicing a need. So before we, we even talk about how much money we are going to make, it's what is the service that I'm offering to the people? What am I, what am I giving? Uh, I always say like church, Church exists to service those that are outside <laughs> so that they can come. So the same with business. It exists to uh, what? To service a particular need. So the very first thing when we look at I'm going into business or this is what I, I want to do, in our sense we said, okay, this is what we are, this is the areas that we are going to service. Um, 
as an engineer, I said, okay, we're going to go into this, uh, these electrical, uh, these uh, telecoms. So, but what's in the market are we servicing? I can't service everything, but I'm like, okay, we're not going to go to these uh, low voltage. We're going to start from medium voltage, high voltage transmission uh, and uh, distribution network. That's what we are servicing. Uh, he's a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't. So he, he, he has his market. So each and every one of us have to properly define our, um, our area where we are going to what? To say we are going to service. And you're passionate about that uh, area to what? That you're going to service it and you're going to service it well. I always say one thing that if you are a great business, um, one thing that you need to do is to make sure that uh, this is the thing that I always started with was to say the worst thing anyone can do is to give me an opportunity. Why? Because I will make sure that I maximize on that particular opportunity. And to the point that, you know, most businesses, sometimes it's not about that you're not getting um, uh, the business, but it's you are not servicing it well. And the more you service it well, because you want to service it well, as uh, we met Pastor at one conference, and uh, he said something very profound. And he says, you must work hard till, till you get to a point where you don't need to introduce yourself. So there has to be, there is business that will come because the people, uh, uh, because you have tended for it, but there is business that should come because you have made a name. Amen. You have made a name that people now, you don't, you really don't need to, what, you're still advertising, like Coca-Cola still advertising, you're still advertising, but there is just people who are coming because they, what, they know the kind of service that you bring. Are you with me now? Yes. So, this is, so when we are looking at, I'm studying it, we have been in business now for, since 2006, um, and God has given us, you know, good growth in the years since when uh, we started. And um, I can see we, in the whole time from when we started, we, through wise planning and that common sense, we are now uh, adjusting ourselves in ensuring that we continue to, what, to give support and to adapt to the constant changes that are in the business environment. Because if you don't adapt to those constant changes, then you will be literally taken out. Are you with me? So it's not about, that is, that is one thing that most people have, uh, have come to the point where they were like, uh, how am I going to step in to the next level? And it's, it is all about this thing. I'm more, there is wise planning. I've planned. This is our strategy. You can have your business plan. You can have um, your marketing plan, your marketing strategy drawn up. Um, this is the areas that we're going to target. This is my uh, projections are like this. Uh, but after you have done all that, eh, having done all that, you're going to now get down to a point where you, you now get to the common sense and you get to understand the facts. What is out there? And how can I position myself to be what? To be of service to the people. Because once you are still maintaining a service, I do not know how you get out of business. Mm. Mm. Hey. I, it, it will make no, they will not, people will always want to do business with you because what, there is a service that you are give, rendering. Amen. And you know, sometimes, you know, we as, uh, as Christians, we, uh, we get to a point where we, f we think it's all about, um, 
um, no, the you know the favor, the 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 grace, the you want to now um, offer poor, surely do surely work and expect God to bless that. No, we have an excellent spirit within us, and so whatever we should do, we should do it what with the spirit of what of excellence. Amen. I was to, I I was trying to say, okay, guys, make sure we give that excellent approach this is how we do it because that is as you are doing that particular job you are just as good as your last project you're just as good as your last project what what project did you do there's a story of one man who um you know he was a he's this big man he decided to say all right now i have a son-in-law i'm just checking my time i have a son-in-law and i'm going to i need to to do something special for this uh, my son-in-law so the son-in-law was a builder he, he owned the construction company so he said okay i want you to come and build a house i want you to find first find a piece of land and i want you to build me uh, a house then he gave him the uh, the plan he gave him so okay this is the kind of house that i would want so as the, the guy came you know he was like hey you know this is my father-in-law huh? He's very, eh? he's, all, he's very rich, but he doesn't want to even uh, bless me here. And, you know, he's just doing it with grumbling. And uh, so when he came, he did it. He did the whole job. And uh, so he looked for the, the cheapest of materials. He looked for the cheapest of stuff, the cheapest of bricks. Everything was cheap. After he having built this massive house, mm, but one built very cheaply and with cheap, cheap things. He came back to the father and said, hey, I've done, I've finished. Um, then the father said, oh, where are the keys? He gave him the keys. And he says, you know, just I was with all that you have done, you know, for me. And uh, I just wanted to do something well for you. <laughs> I just wanted to do something well for you. And here is the keys to your house. imagine what was the son-in-law's reaction had I done it you know the Bible talks about service that whatever we do whether we work on we should do it as service unto the Lord so all that he had done he did it with memory he did it shortly and this was his house so uh, if we are to do anything else because anyone who does something anyone who buys something um, whilst we, uh, whether you're offering a service or you're offering a product or whatever it is, we, there is some attachment now, nowadays because people have changed. You know, I've done businesses from, uh, uh, whilst there's this engineering, I've done logistics uh, to the point that at one time I was doing auctioneering. And I got to, <laughs> in these different businesses, I got to understand uh, the markets and the South African, how the mindset is. And um, one, one of the things is here, and within which, with each and every one, you buy, people buy into an experience. You buy Coke because of what Coke will do. Coke is not Fanta. You get it? Coke is not Fanta. Neither Fanta is Coke. So when you buy Coke, you want Coke. So you buy into the experience. Uh, some, somebody, you know, um, who, when you go and buy whether you, a phone, you go and buy an apple. When you buy an apple, you are buying into the experience of apple. We, we don't go to iStore looking for Samsa. No. So uh, when we perfect our service to, the, to that point, you know, we'll be like uh, the, the same uh, Steve Jobs who said he, he made sure at, one, at a time when it was not happening, one store was just, he says, we're going to open up stores which are just going to be selling our product. That's how confident the man was in his product. 
He's going to sell one product, and we're going to just do that product. So it means they, they have gone into perfecting that particular product to the point that uh, when people go there, they, you are buying into the experience. Anyone who, uh, there is Mercedes, there is BMW, there is uh, uh, Range Rover, there is all these cars, right? The person that goes and buys a BMW, that person just wants to make sure when they get on the highway, they're gone. Yes. Yeah. Then there is a Mercedes. The Mercedes for you know the the elderly who wants to just feel comfort and you know. Uh, <laughs> if you see a young person, they would have they would have bought it and they they make sure they they buy the one which which just goes go. That's that's it. You know, so you buy into an experience. So it, these are I, uh, some of the things that we are saying, okay, when we are pushing that, that is keeping abreast of the facts. What experience am I giving my customers? What is the kind of experience that I want to give? Are you with me? Huh? So, you know, if I'm to just, that's, that's just some service. And as you give the service, then you find out that things begin to just unfold, the business begins to grow. And one opportunity, um, a good name is better than riches, that good name will begin to birth so many things. So much that you, you now get what? We're now getting the, the referrals. You can go to this one because what? They do things well. That is why sometimes it's not, um, there are some people you know, who are asked, okay, what are you doing now? Then I mean, you know, I was selling some clothes now. I'm, uh, um, I'm selling some medical supplies now. You know, tomorrow they are selling something. It's, you don't know now whether to, to refer because what? You are not, you are jack of all trades, but you're a master of what? Of nothing. So you're not known as to, if, if, if you are, you are de developing a group, it's good to develop a group, but be like, you know, like uh, Brian Joffe has, uh, Bigvest does everything from flowers to construction. <laughs> but they have made a name first as Bigvest. They have invested in that one particular. So now they have a name, they can branch. So the same with us. Every one of us have got a name that we can what, put out there and we refine our craft and it becomes the thing that we are known for. What is it that we, we are known for? What, is, what service do you render? Uh, whether you're a lawyer or whether you're, uh, you're an accountant, whether you're, and, and those are two people hmm? uh, that each and every businessman needs, you must have a great accountant. Hmm? Great accountant. Hmm? And a great attorney. I'm telling you. <laughs> I know the Holy Spirit is our advocate, is our counselor. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, I'm, you get, you need these two people because one, a great attorney will make sure that they get you out of any situation. So I've made sure I have a great attorney. And one, you must have a great law, a great accountant. Great accountant. Mm -hmm. Because that is, they, as businesses rise, you know, one thing I've seen, there was one man I used to know, he, they had a fleet, 100 uh, trucks, um, fleet of, tr uh, of trucks, which he just lost. How? They lost it because of what? They didn't have a great accountant. They didn't have a great account. So those are the things that you need to, uh, to avoid. So if you know, um, the Bible says, uh, um, there is one that what uh, sees evil, right? You, and what prepares for it. So you know that this will come, then you prepare. So you must be prepared in the, all those things. So whether that is your function, that is your trait, that is your uh, key, it is about doing it very well so that you are known in that thing. What, what can people, when you come to, to people's mind, what is, because what is the thing that comes uh, when they see you? Amen. Hmm? Pastor is, uh, 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 you know, when you know, when you see him, you know, if it's in a different setting, 
people will say football. Yeah. Eh? But it's in, in uh, they will say, hey, the devil chaser. <laughs> <You know that? laughs> so the, that he has made his trade. Are you with me? So it, it, it happens in each and every one of us has to be defined. There is an icon. You're an icon. See yourself as an icon. Um, when you see, um, sorry, I'm using Apple because I'm, I'm uh, really an Apple fan. But uh, so you see the, when you see this icon, the Apple icon, you know this is not a Samsung iPad. Even we call it a Samsung iPad. It's not a <laughs> but because what it's this icon tells me the experience that I'm going to have. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So I can say, uh, so that is with service and that is with, uh, I've touched on service and I've touched on a little bit of how we can plan. Because one thing is, one thing that I'm now seeing, which I'll show you as an experience, is the business grows. And we're coming to a point where I think we, uh, we used to have some uh, meetings. And I was just going into the futuristic uh, mindset of uh, how people behave and how the world is going to be. And one thing that I've come to find out is we're going to a place, you'll see it with um, Uber. Uber, they're going to a place where they are saying, so okay, drive those cars. That's the future. That is the future. So if you, you do not plan for what is going to happen in the future, uh, then we are going to be what? If you don't take that, you will be taken out. Uh, just like, you know, your blockbusters, uh, the video company. Uh, who is watching, uh, who is going to run videos now? No one. You get out of me. So if we do not plan for the future, we take ourselves out of business. And the thing is to always be ahead of the trend. And so that is what we just um, um, we've just looked at getting ourselves in to the sense. Okay, this is how we started, but as the business has started, we are now getting to find out. Okay, what kind of products can we offer our clients, which are futuristic? And now, no matter what, you know, some people will say, I don't, you know, people would, is, uh, would say, I don't uh, like uh, internet, or I don't like technology. Unfortunately, we're going into a season where if, even if churches don't like technology, they will feel themselves out. Huh? That's why you see, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> there's a TV. Right, technology is taking place, so we, the, we must harness uh, technology. There's uh, there's so many things that are happening now. Uh, all called the in um, the Internet of Things. Whatever can be done, uh, it can be done through something. There's an Internet of Things um, that we can we can make sure we can ensure that things can be can be achieved. So we have to harness technology. So your business, if the, the more your business does not have uh, the power of technology, the more you will phase out. And we've come with, you know, we've seen it, uh, people are very uh, resistant to change. Mm -hmm. Even uh, we've seen it in our, in our business, you know, the, the very fact when you just say, okay, we're changing from this platform to the next platform. I must do seminars, I must, uh, I can do uh, IT guy. He, he must make sure that he tries to uh, get everyone on board because what people are resistant to change. And it will come to a point where, you know, service will be taking place here. My pastor is in uh, uh, protocols in Nigeria and the service is being beamed here. And people are coming and we ask why? Because there has been a total amount of shift. And people are saying that no, you don't have to, uh, you might not even be in one place. <coughs> because as the ministry gr is growing, what is needed to perform an assignment? So the same with your business. Uh, do not um, say when we grow big, then I will manage it very well. But one thing is, you need to have the structure that you're going to build upon. And I don't know if I can just uh, give you a 
structure, systems, and strategy. Structure, systems, strategy. Structure, systems, strategy. Structure, systems, strategy. That continues to just go. But once we have the structure, the systems are in play, working the strategy that the business is going. So without that, we'll be, you, you'll be phased out. And God has given us, as we have the mind of Christ, not only we're praying for the mind of Christ, but we have the mind of Christ. So if we have the mind of Christ, the mind of Christ is creative. I, I truly believe that this is a time where we as the church, uh, uh, whilst we, we know we are so full of the Holy Ghost, uh, that we need inventions when the moment you get into a prayer closet, inventions should come out as you come out because what? The, the Holy Ghost has given you divine ideas. There are certain things that, that is what uh, the, uh, will give us the advantage in the business. That we, the Christian business people, are doing it far much better and we are ahead of what the pack. Amen. Amen. I believe that is a... Uh, this place is getting very hot for me now. I'm having business and money and investments. is known for for business. Do we go there? And uh, some are not known for sound. <laughs> it's not working. Hallelujah. Wonderful to have Pastor Nasha. I called him, tried to call him since Friday because I knew I was going to hold this meeting. And, um, and I'm happy he came from a different, from a different angle. And um, this is the men's ministry of Christ Ambassador's Church. And um, Pastor Joe, please stand. Pastor Joe heads this department. And um, the greatest... The great strength of any ministry is our ability to come together and stick together, whether it be men and f women or whether it be men or women or men on their team. We saw the women yesterday. What a great team. What a great team. We saw the women. And um, um, uh, my request is that we should take this men's meeting very serious and i want us to give um, pastor joe every support when we call for meetings we're not calling space we call for human beings and we should be able to identify should be able to identify the men of this house not just in face i said to you yesterday you know that there are church members and there are sons, and there are committed sons. These are different levels of people. Every pastor wants to go to war with a committed son, because that committed son will lay his life down for his father. And uh, Pastor Joe here represents me and the ministry. We want you to show the men's ministry every support. You are the, you, you, and I know that when men come to church, women follow. Children follow because men go to church. So we want you to give him all the support that you can give him and his team and make sure when we hear announcements that there are meetings, we, we come. Um, at one point, Pastor Nash was the 
men's um, leader. You were once. He was once. He, he, you know, he's a son of the south, and uh, we are grateful to God with what God is doing for him and the ministry that God has given to him. Again, we want to say thank you. Thank you. We want to say thank you for coming. Thank you for being here. Amen. Amen. Obviously, I knew, I knew I was going to go to a different angle, but I wanted a balance. I wanted a balance because um, most times, I, not most times, from the time I traveled to, from the time I traveled to Cape Town, the Holy Spirit started ministering to me. And one of the things he, he put in my heart is this he says if you have poor people poor men in your church you will never rise above them i say it again if you have poor men in your church you will never rise above them am i making sense because if we need to buy a church bus the buying of the church bus will be dependent on the men we have. If we want to start something big somewhere, it can only come by the size of men we have. We went to a church in Cape Town, beautiful church. Myself and my team, we were about 13 of us that went to Cape Town, and myself will go. And, um, so we went to a church. A Nigerian church. When we got into the church, it, the church sits about 6,000 people. And he tells me, I feel it, 6,000, we fill it up. And while we were coming out, he showed me a new Mercedes Benz. Um, he said, one of my members just bought me um, this Mercedes Benz, 1.4 million. And I was so excited that while I was having dinner, I saw a message on my phone. He had deposited one million in my account. It was obvious that this pastor's level is determined by his members. <laughs> so, so, uh, and I have a desire. So I started talking to God. I said, "What do I do?" He said, "You have grace. You have enough grace." to change status and change lives of people. He said, use it. But in my thinking that I have grace, I understood that grace without planning, grace without planning can never take you anywhere. That was why I decided to invite him. Amen? I decided to invite him because he's in business. He started business from this house. I'm telling you, when I say he started business, he started business from the south. The day he started, I prayed for him. When he started his business. And it's, it, it, he needed to come for people to know that what we're saying is possible. That God can change people's lives from here to there. Today I had a meeting with my family members. And we're talking about how the bereavement, one of my brothers died, very close brother died, and we're talking about finances. As we're talking about the finances, <laughs> uh, sensitive what I'm about to say, but there's cameras, I'm just being careful because my parents, my family members watch ATV. But I was called upon to play a role. And the role I was called upon to play is because I'm a rich man. Uh, I said it. Mm. <laughs> Are you getting the picture? Mm. Because I was necessary. And that is the desire of my heart. That every son in this house, I don't want to say member, if you're a member, I don't cover you. Because members are not consistent. Everywhere they go, they are members. They are members. I don't have time for members. Members don't receive an inheritance. It is only sons that receive an inheritance. As I'm going to be ministering, I'm going to be doing this meeting, uh, and, I, 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 and I'm going to be discussing with Joe every three months 
I will come. Every three months, I will come from a different angle. So I'm going to go spiritual because for me, I believe that spiritual. I remember the, young, the day this young man first came to our church. I was ministering in the service, and I, it's not today I said they prophesy, you know. <laughs> and I said, you young man, you. You are sitting there looking very tattered. <laughs> I said, you, what do you want God to do for you? He looked at me. He said, I want God to give me mommy. I said, sure. You have faith. Say yes. I said, come. Very young. Very young man. He just came out. This was like 16 years ago now. 16 years ago. He came out and stood in front of me. And I've always understood the effect of finance or money. And I said, anyone that wants God to bless him like God will bless him. So some people just resist you. Some people don't even believe, even though they're in church. I said, put money on the ground. They put some money on the ground, put some money. I said, come, young man, stand on this money. Put your foot on this money. He put his foot on the money. He was matching the money. And I said, from today, you will not serve money. Money will serve you. Amen. 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 And that's why you raise sons. I tell you, you raise sons. When we wanted to build this place, I told him we wanted to build. And it's your house. What do you want to do? Um, he thought I was joking, or he thought I was joking. He said, every brick that you need in this church, I'll provide it. I said, what? He said, yes. He said, every brick you need in this church, I will provide it. I told you, you are, you are, your level is the you level of your members. So when we started, I called him, I will start a building. I don't know how many trucks. Did you count? He bought more than 30 trucks of bricks. Every brick we used there, he provided for it. Brick, this brick. Around the whole, the whole church. <laughs> now, now, what I'm saying is there are multi-millionaires that are sitting here that all they need is me. I'll show you why I say so. And as I begin to grow in ministry, when I started ministry, I did not talk about myself. Because they taught us not to talk about yourself. Uh, they taught us to be humble and not to talk too much and just say what God did, what God did. But as I began to grow in ministry, I began to understand the effect of the anointing. And Jesus would say, as the, uh, uh, Peter said, as such as I have, I give. Jesus would say, do you believe I can do these things? And I'm like, why are you doing this, Jesus? Why are you saying this? And he said this to me. If you don't magnify what you have, you cannot give it to somebody else. If you don't magnify what you have, you cannot pass it down. It is what you know you have that you can pass down to people. And I began to realize and I began to look at great men that have gone before us. How they talked. How they behaved. How they exalted their office. Because if they did not exalt their office, people would not receive the office. You understand what I'm saying? People would not receive the office that... And it is that office that if people can drink from the spirit of the office. And I tell my members, you cannot be my son if another pastor's picture is on your phone. You, you will never drink from me. No, you can't drink from me. If, if your ringtone rings... Bushiri's name, uh, Bushiri's voice. Am I making sense? Bushiri's voice is on your phone. You have, even if you like, call me daddy, daddy, you're a bastard. Am I talking from now? If you watch the people from Christ's embassy, the number of blessings, the way they receive blessings, you'll be shocked at how God blesses them. You know why? They are connected. Most of them fry their hair. 
You see their hairstyle. You see you you will see that they are no. I'm serious. You will see that they are connected to the one they are following. That when it was time to arrest Jesus, they could not arrest Jesus because all the disciples looked like him. So we began to understand this mystery as we went. That for you to be able to enjoy the prosperity or the grace that is on your father, you needed to be like him. You need to drink from his spirit. Now we're here, we've, we've released devotional books. There are people that don't have it. You've just cut off yourself. If I release a book, you must buy it. Again, I was watching Bushi the other day. He released a release book. 300,000 copies. People were buying four. Five. Four. Why? It wasn't about the book. It's about the spirit of the man. They needed the spirit of the man to rob off from them. Jesus says, he says, I'm going away. When I go, I will send my spirit. I will send my spirit. When you drink of my spirit, I said it to you yesterday, if anybody is gossiping me, you will hold him. Imagine your born father, your own father. That is your born father. Why people are discussing that your father is a drunkard? You're, you as a son, you keep quiet. No. You're a bastard. Yes. No. Never. You, you will go crazy. You say, who? My daddy? Now, why? It is not because of a man. Because we drink of his spirit. The same reason why we can fight for God. We say, no, God is great. God, because he's our father. You Have you seen God before? Well, some of you can carry knife for God. Or for Jesus. You see, if I die, I perish for Jesus. Why? Because of the spiritual connection. Now, I'm going to look at some few things in the scripture. Then we, I'm going to begin to do impartation. Amen. Amen. I'm going to begin to do impartation. Amen. I carry grace. Amen. If I don't carry any type of grace at anywhere, I carry grace to bless. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, I carry enough grace to change people's lives. And it has happened over and over and over where we hear pockets of testimonies even outside this place. Sometimes I see people on the road, they tell me stories, and you're like, for real? So if things like this can happen for people, why can it not happen to my own sons? Why can I not see people here in politics, multi-millionaires, head of industries, leaders in society, in government? We saw a lady here yesterday. Some of you panicked when you saw one police lady there. Eh? I don't know. You saw her. Some of you are wondering, hey, what? you saw her? She's been a member of this church. She's been a member of this church. We have like six police officers here. Nobody knows them. We have people that come from municipal. Nobody knows them. But I get angry. I say, no, you can't be a member. You must be a son. It's not enough to be a member. You must be a son. Okay, let's go spiritual. Pastor Nash has talked natural things let me go to deep things hallelujah somebody say reuben shall live oh uh, yes okay let reuben live somebody say let reuben live let i'm going to teach for the next 45 minutes then i begin to do an impartation so please tell your wife send her a text message please leave me alone i'm about to come with something that will change your life amen, amen. Now, I'm going to teach. I love to teach the Bible because I'm a Bible student. I don't know how to say it. I know Bible. Um, I don't apologize to anybody. I know Bible. God taught me Bible. So when I explain Bible, I explain Bible to the simplest way for people to understand it. People like Pastor Nash like to go Greek version. He didn't go there today. I don't do Greek version. I don't know. I don't know New Testament, Old Testament. I just know Bible. So I'm, I will explain Bible to you this night. 
And some of you might be in that place uh, that I'm going to be explaining. Then I'm going to deal with what I'm going to deal with. And I believe that your tomorrow will be better than today. Amen. I say your tomorrow will be better than today. Amen. Genesis chapter 49. If you have a Bible, just open it. If you don't have, I can read for you. Genesis 49 from verse 1. Hear what I'm about to say. It's very precise. He says, And Jacob called all his sons. He called all his sons and said, Gather yourselves together that I may tell you that which will befall you in the future. My goodness. That I might tell you what will befall you in the future. He says, Gather yourselves together and hear, you sons of Jacob, and hearken to Israel, your father. That's him. Reuben, verse 3, that's where I'm going. Reuben, thou art my son, my might, and the beginning of my strength, the excellence of dignity, and the excellence of power. What he has just done, he has given a prophecy. A divine prophecy to his first son. And the prophecy that he gave to his first son, let's count the prophecy he gave. He said, number one, you are my firstborn, number one. You are my might. You are the beginning of my strength, three. The excellence of dignity, four. And the excellence of what? Of power. He says, this is whom you are, Reuben. I have seen your future. You are my son. I begat thee. And I know this is whom you are and whom you are supposed to be. Let's read verse 4 together. Verse 4. Unstable as water. Thou shalt not excel. Trouble. You are everything. You have enough power inside of you to function. But as a father, I tell you, you will not excel. My goodness. You will not succeed. Now, no matter how Reuben planned his life, what has happened is that the father of Reuben has blocked Reuben's opportunity one. The father has blocked his present tense. And his father has blocked his future tense. He said, Reuben, you will not succeed now. In the future, you will not succeed. Not that you will not just succeed, because you are my firstborn, you are supposed to produce, everything you produce will not succeed. Now, so many of us are in the same shoes. Pastor Nash can always sit down and tell you, plan well, restructure. What's the name? What you said there? Systematic, uh, he will not succeed. That's what the man said. <laughs> if you like, use systems. If the other one is what? Structure. Then you don't say it. Strategy. He says system, structure, strategy. He will not succeed. Now, it is bigger than what he's saying. Glory to God. Now, the reason why it has effect is that this is his father. And I have always told you there are only three people qualified in the universe to bless you. Hallelujah. Only three people. God, your father, and your pastor. By scriptural recording. God, your father, your pastor. If your father curses you, God can change it. Your pastor can change it. If your pastor curses you, 
Your father cannot change it. God can change it because there are levels. And God respects those levels. God, pastor, father. If your father blesses you, if your father blesses you, your pastor can cancel it. God can cancel it. Why? Because your pastor is the voice of God. He says to Moses, I am sending you as a God. You go and take my place. That is why we have the grace. You've seen it happen so many times. We have the grace to cancel whatsoever your father, your uncle, your auntie, or whatever. But if God causes you, yes. no man, no woman, not even your parents can change the cause. I, I came this night from another angle. I really did come from another angle. Now, in, the, in this time when Reuben and his generation were going through difficulties, you find out that for real, for real, the words of the father of uh, uh, Reuben affected him. How do you know? Go to Genesis, go to uh, Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1. Are you there? If you have a Bible, I should, I should read for you. Matthew chapter 1 from verse 1 and 2. Are you there? Okay, can somebody read for me? 1 and 2. 1, 2, go. The Abraham, verse 2. What? Reuben was the first son. And Reuben was the son of Jacob. But when the Bible was explaining the lineage of Jacob, they left Reuben. Did you read it? Now, Judah is Jude. That's whom we're talking about. It's not in this... Um, this, the sound is Jude. John, Jude, Jude. It is Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah. Judah is Judah. That's praise. So Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebedon, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, Asa, Joseph, Benjamin. They were 12. The fourth was Judah. He said, um, Abraham begat Isaac. Isaac begat Jacob. Jacob begat Judah. Where's Reuben? Reuben has been eliminated in the process because there was a heavy voice. But these people writing the scriptures did not have a revelation that we have now. Somebody said, talk to me. They did not have a revelation that we have now. And the revelation that we have now is the revelation of Christ. The revelation of Christ had to do with the revelation of mercy. Am I talking to somebody? The revelation of Christ has to do with the revelation of mercy. But the people writing the scriptures and putting the lineage did not understand that God had already sent a man called Moses. And he gave Moses an assignment, the same assignment God gave to me. The assignment that Moses had was the assignment of a deliverer. I hope my teaching is easy this night. Let me explain what I mean in scriptures. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 33. Please read again for me. I saw somebody reading. Deuteronomy chapter 33 from verse 4. Deuteronomy. Now listen carefully. Listen carefully. Deuteronomy chapter 33 from 4 to 6. Yeah? Moses said to us as a law. Uh -huh. In the inheritance of the congregation of the Even in the inheritance of the congregation of Jacob. So what Moses did is that Moses now is about to leave. Moses now as the deliverer is about to die. So Moses says all of you 
representing the 12 tribes of Israel show up. Because it is a tradition for the blessing to be released. But in the case of Moses, Moses did not have a legal, no, no, did not have a kind of natural father right. Okay? He did not have a natural father right, but in the eyes of God, God has sent Moses as a prophet. Am I here? He has sent Moses as a prophet. And remember what I said. The pastor and the prophet has a legal right to break the curse of the father. Read five. Mm -hmm. When the head of the people and the tribe of Israel were gathered together. Now verse 6. Let Reuben live and not die. And let not his men be few. My goodness. He knew if you go through the blessings, he blessed every family differently. But when it came to Reuben, he knew there was a problem in the lineage of Reuben. And for him to change it. Now when you hear the word, let Reuben live and not die. It means let Reuben be blessed. Am I talking to somebody? Yes. So Moses got up and said, give me all the tribes again. Then he remembered the cause. He said, hey, let Reuben live. We know you have cost him. We know he has a cost. But I come as a prophet. And I say, let Reuben live. Let Reuben not die. I came this night to say to somebody, let Reuben live. Let Reuben live. I came as a prophet. For you to enjoy wealth, and prosperity there need to be a spiritual blessing which is what I came to do this night Amen. glory to God Amen. let Reuben live I don't know who cost you I don't know what sin because if you go to the cost of Reuben Reuben looked at his, his father's wife's nakedness and went to her bed he saw, you know, the, the people think that he slept with Jacob's uh, um, wife. He was a promis promiscuous man. He was a wayward man. So they say, you are unstable. You, you are not stable. You are like water. Any woman you see, you follow. You even followed my own wife, you will not succeed. Stable as what a big man, you will not succeed. There was a curse on his, in his life. So today I just came to do some few things. I don't know what sin that is haunting you. There are sins that haunt you. There are girls that you break their heart. They, <laughs> they put a curse. There are women that thought you would marry them. There are people you've treated some different ways. There are things that even people hear that you did this kind of sin. They, 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 you know somebody, have you seen people commit sin? They will just say, hey, this man, for what you did. We don't, they don't even know who did it. Or somebody enters somewhere and massacres people, kills 12, kills 15 people. People that come there, they will just say, hey, let this man sin, follow him. I don't, you understand? Yes. People just for sin you commit. There are evil you, 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 and you, yourself, you think there are no repercussions. But people around you will swear. You mean after this girl gave him three children, he still left. It will never be good with him. There's a cause for your sin. I know you want to join. Oh, I'm telling you. These things have break. break repercussions. He said you are unstable. So this night, I don't know what sin you have committed. I don't know how it followed you. Sometimes people curse your father to the fourth generation. They say all your children you will have will be like you. And when you look at the father, the man is broke. 
The man ha does not have a place to stay. The man is a vagabond. But communities, villages, maybe your father raped somebody or molested a woman, and the village will wake up one morning and say, this, you and your children. So sometimes when these things happen in our lives, we don't realize that they have effect. Are you okay this night? Yeah. They don't realize. Thank you. They don't realize that these things have effect in their lives. Some of you are wondering. I saw a young man sent me an email now while I was sitting down here. Sent me an email from Zimbabwe or from Zambia. If I read the mail, just shock me just now. He said, I have done everything. I have given my CV everywhere. As I saw that email came out just and I was laughing. This man could just be innocent. He could just be innocent. But all of a sudden, he's paying a price that he does not even know there's a price to pay. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. And again, one of the things that have come, I'm just lining up the things that have come, what are you've seen? Number two, if there be voices, strange voices, angry voices. I just got a message now from Pastor Great. You know, he came and talked with me. You know, and um, said how sorry he was for all the nonsense that happened in Christ Ambassador's Church. And he came to said, I'm, I'm about to start my ministry. I needed to pray for my ministry. We're about to kick off. I cannot do this without calling you for you to release me. And I said, wow, you're a wise man. You're a wise man. I said, I'm going to be praying for you. And I remember when Pastor Great first came, Pastor Great did everything he knew how to do. Was with Winner's Chapel. Slept with two or three women. They kicked him. Started his own ministry. Went crazy. They kicked him. Then he finally came to me. He was just everywhere. But I know he watches. But you understand what I'm just talking about. Sometimes you don't even know. So one day he came to introduce. He said he's written a new book. Came into my office. I've written, I think he will allow me to say this. He has written a new book. He wants me to pray for the book. So as we were, he put the book in my office. I looked at the book. I looked at it. I said, okay, let me pray for you. And I just put my head in. <laughs> He said, he's not going anywhere. I said, where is he from? Where is he going? He said, no, he's not going anywhere. He's not going anywhere. I said, he said, pastor. He said, forget that pastor nonsense here. Yeah. <laughs> I said, okay, what is, the, what is the problem? He said, this boy's father, this boy's father, one day, he told himself he has gone to church. If he wants to go to church, let him go to his church. I don't have a problem. But he went in the community and carried me. That's a shrine now. He carried me and put me in the bush. And rain is beating me. Morning, night. He says all his brothers and his sister, they are sitting with me in this bush. He's not going anywhere. I said, which bush? He said, I'm being beaten by rain. And it's his father. So we're determined that he will stay in this bush. One day his brother was there were in the house eating rice. His brother had a voice. Jude. He said, eh? He, <laughs> he ran out. I said, no, I said, eh? Oh, yeah, no, who is calling me? Eh? I said, what's that? Eh? He was taking off his shirt. As I speak to you, no, I think we prayed for him. Remember, we prayed for him. He entered the street, took off his clothes. I went to Onisha Market, Onisha. You know where Onisha is? He was walking about everywhere. They called him in the bush. The reason why they've not been able to call this one because he still goes to church. He still says he's a pastor. But they caged him. You understand what I'm saying? If we don't release you, you cannot go to this analysis. This pastor, now she's talking about. <laughs> you will have the analysis in your head, but you can't function. Am I talking? No, you, you, you desire to function. You desire to do business. And that's what even God desires for you. We prayed for him. As I was finishing praying for him, I put him on his wife. Ah! His wife went crazy again. I said, you too. Pastor and pastoress. <laughs> what? No, 
nonsense. What nonsense is this? He thinks if he marries the wife, then there are, it was confusion everywhere. But last time I was in Nigeria, I prayed for them, released them. I just got, as I was sitting, just now as I was sitting here, he sent me a message. That's Pastor Great. I want to show you. And if you, for those of you that do not, you must believe me, don't need to doubt me. Uh, he just sent me a message. Look at it. it wasn't. Look at the time. What is this? Eight, uh, Eight, 18 22. He just sent me a message. Look at what he sent me. My father will be eternally grateful to God for the divine connection with you and your ministry. First, thank you for the privilege of airing my wife's video. We are grateful, sir. We just finished our first anniversary program. We were blessed with a Toyota Highlander SUV. Remember, you prayed for us before the program as you were getting set to go to Cape Town for your program, and heaven responded instantly. Mm. Thank you, Daddy. Look at, mm. look at it. They just bought him new cars. Okay. You, you understand what I'm saying? Now, I understand I carry this grace. But you see, he calls me, thank you, Daddy. This daddy, he, he there's a connection. There, is, oh yes, there is. There must be. Don't be. A, don't be a vagabond. You cannot be a vagabond. Amen. Amen. Oh glory to God! I came for business this night. I I believe before the end of this year, the the, the change will be unspeakable. Amen. I said the change will be unspeakable. Amen. Amen. So I, I came to deal like against angry voices. There are angry voices that will put you in a place where you yourself will not understand. These people are internally angry. I saw one young man in Super Sports some years ago. He's not my friend, but I still suspect him. <laughs> I just walked in. I'm telling you. And unfortunately for him, every program we do, we wear suits. You understand? We dress well. We are allowed to dress well. But because I'm a pastor, I have an avalanche of suits. And the super sports gives us four suits per season so that you can change. So one day I just walked in. I wore my own different kind of suit. Looked different. He just looked at me. Looked at me. Looked. On his own. He just said, you think you're all that, eh? I said, huh? I said, hello. Huh? He said, no, I don't like you, man. I just don't like you. I said, Rusande Behedia, I don't like you too. I don't like you. I don't didn't know him from anywhere, but I cannot allow his don't like me to overshadow my own. I don't like you. I'm a spiritual man. These are strange voices. I, amen. I don't know what they told him to tell me when I get there. Just say, Tell him you don't like him, he will be finished. I refuse. I said, me too, I don't like you. I returned that I don't like you to you. Do well, look what happened. I said, that man, I don't like him. <laughs> I'm a spirit man. Now, there are voices. Strange voices. You don't even know what, who calls your name in the night. You don't even know who, when they hear your name, they get irritated. You don't even, I'm telling you the gospel truth. So there are strange voices that keep us in the place where we begin to go through this kind of rejection, undue rejection. Number three, we, we call it uh, 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 strange pronouncements, mm, like the one they did for Ruben. What did, it's a strange pronouncement. Now, let me tell you another strange pronouncement. When David was dying, when David was dying. I've, that's one of my greatest scriptures. I get excited. David called his son. He said, come Solomon. He said, I'm getting old. But I know you're wise. Have you read it? Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful script there. He said, I know you're wise. He said, uh, uh, Jonathan, what's that? Um, no, no, the, the, his... His war, war guy, jo, jo, Joab, Joab. He said, Joab killed an innocent man. You, he killed an innocent man. Don't allow him to live. 
kill him. This is a man and his son in the bedroom. <laughs> Determining the life of a warrior. Strange pronouncement. Am I making sense this night? We are men. Don't think that Satan will allow you to flourish easily. Or people will allow you in this Africa. People say, ah, why are you doing this kind of ministry? Can't you see Americans? <laughs> I laugh. I say that is why it's called Africa. That's why it's called America. Their own problem is more than also just that they have already, they're crazy already. They are, they've lost it. They've lost it. <laughs> it, it me, I was laughing that I say if this Steve Joel comes to Christ ambassador, he wouldn't have died. <laughs> That's Steve Joel, the one that did Apple. <laughs> no, with that kind of grace, mm. who will keep you alive? Mm. <laughs> Every power following Steve Joel, <laughs> die, die. <laughs> Who's out for him? <laughs> Amen. I don't even think, me, I still think that there are forces that have to eliminate him because of the good he's bringing to the world. Now, there are evil pronouncements. There's another one he told his son. He said, this guy did me wrong. He did me wrong. Don't allow him to leave. So he started thinking, how do I kill this guy? He said, look, you did my father wrong. But any day you leave Johannesburg and I hear, I'll kill you. Ten years later, not one year, one of his sons ran away. He chased his son from Joburg to Pretoria. They came and told him, he said, I warned you. <laughs> I warned you not to leave. The problem wasn't that the boy left. The problem was that they have already pronounced his death. They have declared they have killed him. Now, some people have killed your career. Some have killed your business. So, I'm telling you what I'm talking about. You don't even, you, see, you saw the girl yesterday that was dying. You saw? The fact they have done a funeral already for him. She's still in trouble. They've done funeral. They've done gone funeral parlor. They've already taken her child. They say you will die. There's no reason. You will die. This is a straight pronouncement. There are people that start business, man of God, they start the business just like you're saying. Some of them lose it not because they want to lose it. There are strange pronouncements that will not allow them to excel. We'll deal with that this night. Yeah. I, I can't listen. I came as a prophet. I, I God has sent me to you this night. Yeah. When we finish with you, we'll send you for counseling to a person else. Teach me, help me. My brain is clear now. My mind is clear. Show me structures and show me uh, <laughs> systems. Look at one of my daughters came to my office. Beautiful girl. She works in one company. She came sh shaking. I said, What is the matter with you? She said, They will sack me. I said, Why? She said, I am intelligent. I am intelligent. I said, Why would they sack you? She says, as I'm speaking to you, they will sack me. I know. I said, okay, what is the problem? She said, I am I'm working in the bank. I am high there. She said, anytime I enter my office, it's like somebody blows at me. I sit on my computer like this. I don't know what to do on this computer and I will close say they've called me for a meeting <laughs> so every time I come I sit so I know they will soon fire me mm -hmm. so I say what are you doing I say no I'm going for a query they're calling me for a meeting on Friday I told them I'm sick this Tuesday this girl was wearing pink she came and stayed in my office for hours so I need to see man of God. They say, you have booking. She said, this one is more than booking. <laughs> I need to see man of God. As I put my hand on her head, she screamed. Promotion. What promotion? I was in the company before you came. I was here. And you think you can rise, 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 rise. And I heard them saying they want to make you head of, head of what? In her office.
in an office. So these things we are talking is not strange, strange things we are talking about. You might not connect to it, but please, God sent me. Amen, somebody. You have person that is talking about expertise. Expertise. This one is my expertise. There are strange pronouncements. Strange pronouncements. Strange, very strange pronouncements. And when these pronouncements come, they follow you till the end. That devil is a bastard. Amen. We're going to pray this night. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. The next one is... We've already dealt with it. We'll talk of causes or enchantment, like the one they made against um, Reuben. There are causes and there are enchantment. A cause is what is pronounced. An enchantment is a continuous renewer. You understand? They enchant against, you know, no. When they come and say, oh, this person will not survive. You come after three months. Oh, this person, yeah, you come after another six months. They keep up that. Uh, that enchantment, people still give sacrifices. They make sure that they go to Moria, <laughs> they go to mountain every year to renew events, to renew things. People renew. People renew. People do enchantments. We are going to be dealing with that on the 28th. You see a father or a, an uncle taking somebody's underwear because he has, to, he has to have a product of the person to be able to renew it. You understand? Yes. Sometimes you see that your trouser is missing. Trouser is missing. The person needs to get in touch with your trouser. Or get in touch with your shirt. Or get in touch with something. They, they, they just need to touch something. That's why some people don't understand the dangers of Facebook sometimes. If they want you, if they just go there, you're snapping like this Facebook. They just print, cha cha cha. <laughs> Once they print, they have what to operate with. <laughs> yes, you pray about things. People don't take a lot of things for granted. Uh, I want to share a story. Where is he? Uh, he's here. At least they almost pray. Come, uh, Victor. He's been set free now. Let me tell you, we didn't discuss him in the church, but I will talk, talk about him here. He's a good-looking man. He's been going through a lot of difficulties, and uh, he came to see me the other day. And uh, he just went crazy. And we started questioning, what is the problem with Victor? Good-looking man, well-dressed man, handsome man. And he tells me, I can't marry. I want to, please forgive me. I'm your father, eh? He tells me, I really want to settle down, but I really can't settle down. I want to settle down. But you see, until you understand the root cause of a matter, now, something happened. You know the story already. I told you the story. He even forgot. Something happened to him nine years ago. Nine years. And in that nine years, he has traveled to Asia. He has traveled everywhere, then come to South Africa and all that. And I'm like, why are you disturbing this young man? Why are you? He said, let me tell you something. Then the spirit took me back, said... Nine years ago, he was working in a restaurant in Oweri. You worked in a restaurant in a club. Yeah? In a nightclub. In a nightclub. And in that nightclub, a lady fell in love with him. I don't know if he... Did you know she was in love with you? No, sir. He didn't know. But I think when I called the lady's name, when I, he was like, my goodness. He said the lady had children. Now, this lady want, did everything to get to him. But the lady could not. But they gave her an instruction. The instruction was, now what the lady did was that, the lady gave a customer money, tip. Tip, tip. He said, after he serves you, take this money and give to him. So the lady took the money, gave to the guy. After he finished serving the lady, the guy, the guy gave him the tip. That was what they used to hold him. Tip, tip. 
what you will say is nothing is money money is money ask him and i told him he was crying he said i remember this is nine years ago a tip a, the girl was when he was screaming he said no he will never get married no this that me he just how can you not follow me is it by force Is it by force that somebody will follow you? But we are talking about what we are talking about. And in all these years, you know, if you see what he was saying, we, because it's my boy, we, we try to cover too, because we, that's why there are no ladies here, in case one is eyeing him and he has this kind of thing. You understand? So we try to keep it. But the truth about it is that there are these things that are hanging. How have you been feeling? How are you? How are 100% okay. Well, how were you? How was it before? I see. It was something else. To the extent I was like, I know I have a problem. And uh, it's a long story, but I know I'm free. Amen. I'm free. Amen. Amen. So, amen. amen. Now, these are, these, are, these are the things we're dealing with. Now, imagine that with all the handsomeness and good lookingness, and dreams and visions he has and the things he wants to do. One of the ladies said, uh, they were even shouting at me that, come on, this it's even worse that he said he's going to put curtains upstairs. I didn't even know he was planning to put that. See, he's already making plans to put curtains in the in the church. How can he put curtains? He was surprised when I said, You plan? He said, Yes, I'm trying to put curtains. Then he said, They even say he wants to dress me. So now, now you're free. Now you know what to do. <laughs> also, he knows, he knows what to do. Don't wait till you have millions. Start now. Or small, small. Yeah, and be connecting. As the more you connect, the more they run away. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, I'm about to pray. I said, uh, I have um, 10 minutes. Amen. Amen. Now, some of them is financial embargo. Financial embargo is his level. But I've seen... I've seen some things in uh, a young man called me once, Pastor Nash, and he said to me, pray for me. I said, why? He said, something is wrong with me. I said, what is wrong with you? He said, I am making money, but I have not made a billion. <laughs> some people, <laughs> people are saying, <laughs> So I've not made, he said, I stand before God. I have been doing contracts and contracts and contracts. They will pay me 890 million. They will pay me, he said, the last one, they paid me 980 million. I said, where is the billion? He said, you need to pray for me. I prayed for this young man. I stand before God. He was even here. They just gave him a contract of 12 billion. True story. So when we talk about embargoes, so many people, because you are weak in your mind or because there's poverty mentality, when we talk of embargo, you are talking of 1,000 rand and 2,000 rand. What is that? I'm telling you guys, I've not made a billion. So what stops our members here to make a hundred million? What stops you from, am I talking to somebody here? What stops you? Once the limits, um, I preached the message and I made you got a revelation. You know when you get a revelation, that's what we work with. He ran to me. He said, I understand. I understand. I said, you understand what? He said, I understand limits. I said, you didn't understand before? He said, no. He said, I was driving past this gate and I understood limits. I said, how? Because he does remote control gates. He said, do you know that this gate can get to Mpumalanga? But we blocked it. <laughs> you understand? He said, do you know that this gate we have there, as long as there's a rail, if you press this, it can just go. He said, this gate can go to Pumalanga. He said, when I saw this, thing, I understood what you meant. He said, we that built the gate, we put something here. 
Jesus. Amen. Yeah. What, what, what Amechi is saying to the gate, I know you have the power to run from here, but don't go past here. Amen. It makes sense. Don't go past here. You, even with the whole grace, the ability you have to run from this end to that end, we will not allow you to pass through here. Just when you get here, you see that gate? When you go in, some of you have remote call, you think goes, goes back. They push it again. He says, nah, nah, have freedom to move. As he goes, I met you will block him here. <laughs> he goes back again. He comes again, I met you will block him here. Now, so many people are like that. I like that. The potential you have the grace you have, the thing inside of you can move, can run. Come on. Glory to God. I went to Hong Kong and I went to one hotel, young man. My goodness. I went to one, not hotel, to a restaurant. My son here took me. He said, Daddy, let me spoil you. We get to this restaurant. Help me, I didn't want to sit by the gate oh, because it was like 50 stories. It was, if you look like this, you run back. Class, the the prawns, the prawns is not the step you catch in a Captain Water. <laughs> you see prawns, you see this. Ah, oh my goodness, food, beautiful food. He, he, the food was just talking to me. I looked at the boy, looked at the boy. <laughs> then he said something to me. He said, "Daddy, eat. I can afford it." My goodness, the word broke me. It, I can afford it. We're talking of a foreign land, and we're five of us that went. It, I can afford it. And I told myself, this is how every living human being should speak. It, it. The day you know you have a problem is if your fridge has a key. <laughs> there are fridges with key. I'm not trying to put anybody down. If your fridge has a key, you need me. <laughs> People lock fridges. No, it's not right. It's not right. And I've come to find out that when you are blessed, you don't eat. Eh? No, you don't eat. You don't eat. What do you want to eat? I got up this night. They said, what will you eat? I said, what do you have? What do you have? I said, let me eat pizza. Me, I'm a Nigerian. What am I doing with pizza? <laughs> I said, Jack, this man, go and buy me chicken. Yes, this chicken, hard body. I like it. So as I said, go now. My wife, I should just bring the hard body. <laughs> Only me. One full, it's one full, eh? Full chicken. That's what I'm going to eat now. Hard body. Not rice. I don't need any. No. This is what my taste board is calling for. We're talking about the blessings of God. Amen. Somebody say, let Reuben leave. Let Reuben leave. Come on, say somebody say, let Reuben leave. Let Reuben leave. Let Reuben leave. Let Reuben leave. That's what he said. Let Ruben, you know, imagine man crying. Let Ruben leave. He has gone, he, is, he has suffered for too long. Let Ruben leave. And he said, let his men not be few. Because more men, more territory. If you go to the book of Joshua chapter 4, when you get home, you read. And Joshua called Ruben and his family and gave them their inheritance. Glory to God. <laughs> and gave them their inheritance. They did not have it from their father. But a priest came in. A man with the anointing came in and broke the spell. Something will break this night. I said something will break this night. Something will break this night. Every line drawn in the sand for you it shall be clean this night in Jesus' name. Yeah. What are we talking about? 
this is my job in the next few months and you will begin to see unusual unusual happenings unusual happenings unusual happenings please stand to your feet we are going to pray then I will begin to pray for you please I want you to I want you to understand that it is not by the laying on of my hands I have always told you that the most important grace that God gave to me is my mouth it's my mouth. If the scriptures confirms it, he says you shall decree a thing and it shall come to pass. Um, Jacob <laughs> did not lay hands on the sons. He said, let me tell you <laughs> what your future will be. It is by pronouncement. It's by pronouncement. So let me tell you. When it was time for Moses to change the status quo, Moses said, let Reuben leave. And everything changed. Amen. You are going to pray this night like you pray like men. There's no woman here to look at you. You know, sometimes when men get saved, they try to pretend. They try to say that the wives cannot know that they are crying or that they are praying. They pray. You understand? They pray. This morning I was praying, and now then I was praying, and my wife eats early in the morning. You know, and then the girl pressed the bell. And I was kneeling down. She has, no, I'm not sure any of them have ever seen me praying. So she walked into the room. And on the light, I was on my knee. And they started talking. I didn't know what to say. So she said, okay, go and please, just go to the kitchen and check something. <laughs> and then she got off the kitchen. I just got up, ran into the toilet and locked the toilet. Because I needed to pray. I needed to pray. I want strangers to come and see me around how I do my things. I went into the toilet, locked the door. I said, God, come on. That one was a distraction for me. So there are times that um, you need to pray prayer that is you and God. I don't know what you desire. Because as long as we're here, we have desires. Amen. Amen. He's doing well in business, but there's more to do. You understand? Yeah, yes, he has not bought me the car. He promised me for 10 years. So every day I pray for him, I say, Lord, remember the car. And I'll keep saying it until my, uh, because I'm the, and as the years go, the makes change. <laughs> Amen. I, I, I want to bless you because I understand, like I said, the, the, the level of your growth is the level of my enjoyment. Amen. It, it, it's natural. If 10 people just hit 10, 10 million, you understand? And they are sons. They will give me tight. Uh, they will not just give me tight. They will, you remember Evander Holyfield was worshipping with Chris Dollar. You know his story. Was worshipping with Chris Dollar when he fought for the fight that they beat his ear. They paid him $99 million. That's what they paid him. Immediately the money came, his manager took all the rights, but his own money was $99 million. As he entered the office, he told his accountant to write a check. Accountant said, yes, to who? What changes? He said, for what? How much is $99 million? How much is the, che the check? $9.9 .9 million. He wrote, do you say what is... Say, <laughs> Say, write the check. I'm the owner of the company. They wrote 99. Say, write another one. Write $1 million. Say, for what? Say, put Crifflo dollar on top. The man said, what are you doing? He said, I fire you. He went to the church, gave the man $9.9 million. They said, this is for your suits and your tie. Which pastor wouldn't like that kind of member? <laughs> you, wouldn't you like that kind of member? Uh, you understand? We'll make you sit in front every service. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. So you're, you're being blessed. Hear me now. You're being blessed profits me more. Oh, yes. Your being blessed profits me more like every father. I was reading the other day, I saw Obama's wife, the happy, the happy mother's day Obama was sending to his wife, 
and his mother-in-law. You know? And I started laughing. Do I think? I said, this mother-in-law, you know how many times she slept in the White House? Just for association. <laughs> Just that you associated with the man. She drives him with security. He's the mother of the... Uh, yeah. That's what I'm saying. So, you need to be blessed. Though. I don't know what you're thinking here. Whether you like it or you need to because your blessing blesses me. Amen. Your blessing blesses the kingdom. Amen. Am I talking to somebody? Amen. Now, we are, we are going to pray a dangerous prayer. This prayer we are going to pray is life and death prayer. I know some of you will not want to pray. But the sons will pray. Say, Lord, if you don't want to bless me, kill me. Yeah. I want to bless your kingdom. I want to do things for nations. But you, I told you, Methuselah lived 990 years and he died. 969. The next thing you see, and he died. He didn't build anything. They didn't tell us of one of his sons. 969. How many women would you have slept? If it is 120 years you are living, how many wives, by the grace of God, you have married? Nothing. Nothing to show for it. No, there are times that you hold the skirt of God. Did this prayer we are praying, did Jacob not pray? He said, I will not let you go. I know some of you might be scared, you might be thinking, but this is how to pull it in. And when I see that your heart, as we pray, and I see that your heart is right, I begin to release grace. Yeah. And your life will never be the same again. Yeah. I say your life will never be the same again. Yeah. Now, you need to pray. You say, Lord, I don't know what you brought me here to do. But if you're not ready to bless me, let me go home. Let me go home. My children cannot be looking for school fees. My wife cannot be put the same hair as if she's a rasta. When you keep one hair for six months, it turns to rasta. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody? No, I don't. I, listen, listen. I don't know about you, man of God, but this is how I changed my life. This is how I changed my life. I was tired. Things were bad for me. But I needed a change. My father had told me you'll be a liability. You'll be a problem. So I knew that by divine, even by the pronouncement, I was supposed to be a liability. But I refuse to be a liability. The reason why I work hard, he says, if you don't improve, your business will just die. If I don't work hard every day, this thing will die. Oh. Churches are closing. Our friends are shutting shops. They are closing. Spiritual attack, physical attack, health attack, this attack. They are closing down. They are closing down. But if you don't work hard, you don't put effort, you don't concentrate on what you are doing, since you've known me, I've been like this. Since he has known me, I've been like this. No shifting. My fire, if this fire reduces, I'm in trouble. Are you ready to go to the next level? Yeah. Tell him, if my time is up, take me. Let me go to heaven now uh, and, and, and see Jesus. But there are things I know that I can still do. And Lord, this is what I'm asking you for this night. Come and open up that mouth and begin to pray. Come and begin to pull it. There are things you must achieve. There are things you must do. Haraboshi kabadea. Me retele boshi kabada ha. Come on, pray. We are praying. We are praying. Ya ba 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 ba. Le rete boshi kabadea. Ya rakate. Limpo to suka bada. Ya ramasele le boho su abade. There are things I must achieve. There are things that I must do. There are decisions to take. There are dealings to happen. There are things that I must do. If I'm done, I'm done. I even have a bossu abada hey. Rekele bossu a andamba halaya. Maraka bila bossu kaba. Pray, 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 pray. We remember my mama must celebrate. Yariba sheka liba hadaba. Raba de kalibo sukaba de kalata. Me rekebo kobo suha liba. Ya 
Rita le mosuka bade. Rema halada. Rema halada. Rema halada. Hey. Yori mahade brosuki bade ya. Yori mahade brosuka bade ya. Oh yes. There must be a change. There must be a change in my life. There must be a change in my ministry. There must be a change in my destiny. There must be a change in my career. There must be a change, oh God. Where my soul is at? Where my heart is at? Where my heart is at? Where my Oh yes, Lord. If my job is overtake me, if you don't want more from me, then let me go. But there are things that I must do. There are things that I must do. Where my shanta is at? In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Amen. We are still going to pray. Paul said in his writing, he said it's more profitable than I go. He said I'm ready to go. But I need to stay. Because my assignment is not done. My assignment is not finished. He said, it is better that I go. Say, you know, it, is, it will profit me if it will be nice for me to go. But it is more profitable to you <laughs> that I stay. <laughs> he said, which means I still have things to do. We're going to pray. Lord, I have things to do. Amen. Am I talking to somebody? Amen. Yeah, I have things to do. In my house, I have a plane that I put there. Even if I buy that, as this young man that he says, I've already started discussing plane. I said, even if I buy the plane for one week and I resell, I've bought a plane. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. I bought my plane. I must buy a plane, though. Yeah, let them talk. Let them talk what they talk. Now my kids are coming. I've told, I told them a long time. I said, they will have one, one million dollars in an account if the, the day I'm dying before you start talking nonsense about me. Some of you will talk nonsense about your friends. You look at your daddy that you did not try. Some of your daddy did not try. Do not allow your children to say the same thing about you. Amen. It's true. Your children can't say the same thing about you. You must say where you're living. I did this for you. I did this. Look at the story person I said. An uncle built a house for a man. Uh, it's your house. But he gave him everything to be. The boy was, yes, look at his level. He said, you, it's your house. Then imagine the house the uncle is living <laughs> if he gave him money to build. Am I talking to somebody? Yeah. You're going to pray from your heart. You say, Lord, my assignment is not over. My assignment here is not over. Give me grace to fulfill my assignment. Amen. Amen. And as we begin to do this kind of prayer, please, just like Pastor Nash preached here, there are some things that you are doing that you know is not you. It's like Ida Peter said, wakes up one morning and says, I want to go and release a CD. Who will buy? But I can contribute with my voice just preaching behind the voice because that's my calling. I've made millions of dollars, millions of runs through football. The other day I told God, I said, ministry has not paid me. This job I'm doing is not paying. The Bible says the gift of God is given to profit. Is that not profit? <laughs> <laughs> the gift is given to profit with hell. That's what he said. Every gift must bring profit. Must bring profit. Anything God gives you must... One of the signs is that prophet is coming. Now, when we pray this prayer, your assignment is not over. The truth about this is, do you even know your assignment? We miss it. Because we are not in line with our assignment. This is what God called me to do. Even if I'm in a church, I don't want to do deliverance. Deliverance will do me. Yes, if I just raise your hand, let's pray and leave. Before I start, two people are screaming. Is that not so? I know my calling. Nobody can confuse me. If you like, bring Kriflo Dollar here. He preaches session. 
Baby, he will preach his session. When I preach my session, they will know it's me. <laughs> they will know it's me. I, no, I don't speak long English. I don't know. I have an accent. So the English will not even work. But if I do my hand, there's one person there. Boom! There's, there's two people there. Boom! Because I'm a deliverer. That's my assignment, to do miracles. The gift of miracles is what deliverance is all about. Works in my ministry. So I stay there. You need to ask God, what is my assignment? Are you a trader? Sell well. Are you a bricklayer? Bricklayer well. Bricklayer until people look for you to bricklayer. You are going to pray. You tell him, my assignment is not over. And I will not go anywhere until I fulfill my assignment. Are you ready to pray? Amen. Now open your mouth and begin to pray. Amen. You cannot go without your assignment being complete. You need to to the highest level. To the highest level. You fulfill your assignment to the highest level. I'm not going anywhere. Until I fulfill my assignment. Until I fulfill the will of God. I'm not going anywhere until I fulfill my purpose. Yearly my Saturday. For this reason, my God, my Father, you brought me here on earth. You put me here in the universe to fulfill destiny, to fulfill purpose. I'm not living until my job is done. I'm not going until I fulfill my purpose here on earth. The world must hear about me. The world must know about me. Open up your heavens. Open up your heavens. Open up your heavens. In Jesus' name. We'll pray one more prayer before I pray for you. I just read something in one of the, something that somebody sent to me. Um, the man called Einstein. You know the Einstein, the intelligent Einstein? A young man came to Einstein and served him in a restaurant. After serving him, he said, Mr. Einstein, he was a famous um, scientist. Everybody knew him. So in the restaurant, he said, hey, Einstein, uh, give me a word of wisdom. Just give me something, a word of wisdom as a wise man. So Einstein said, um, do you have a paper? Then they brought a tissue paper, a serviette. Then Einstein wrote, Whatever you are asked to do, do it well. Then he signed it, Einstein, on the tissue paper. Last week, the tissue paper went on, on auction for $46 million. <laughs> 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 tissue paper went on auction, 40, 46 or 42 million dollars. You need to work so hard that your signature becomes an autograph. Yes. Like me. I have two signatures, one for check account, one for the fans. Sign for me, sign for me, sign for me. Everywhere I go. I tell them, keep that signature the next 50 years when they write the history of religion in South Africa. They will cancel some people, but they will never cancel my name. Amen. Now or never. All those that are doing fraud now, ministry fraud, they will cancel their names. Me will not cancel my name. I'm going to pray a prayer. And pray this prayer like you're serious. Hear this. God speaking to Abraham made him only one promise. He said, I will bless you and I will make your name great. 
<laughs> so the sign of greatness is your name. Ronaldo. What do you call? What does he do? What does he do? Messi. Obama. Queen Elizabeth. T.D. Jakes. We can keep calling. Oya Kilome. T.B. Joshua. He died Peter Sai. Your name. People look for money. His name. That is why when you start business, the first thing they will tell you, go and register the name of your company. Coca-Cola. What's the one? TNJ. Name. They might not know the director. They might not know who. When you bring your fourth TNJ. Name. When you hear Christ Embassy. Name. Christ Ambassadors. Some people don't know me. They know it at Peter's side. Name. You're going to pray it. Lord, make my name great. Uh, he started it. He said, I am Jehovah. <laughs> I am God. He introduced himself. His name is great. <coughs> ne? Yes. When people look for something like personality, they need to look, need to look, know whom to look for. See, the young man has been on the, he's not famous yet now. And I asked him, I said, where is George? Where is Pastor George? When we have problem with ATV, I call, where is Musa? When we have problem, I don't take somebody's problem and give to somebody's problem because the person's name cannot solve that problem. When they say Dankote, my Kili Kataya, cash, <laughs> he says, man, nobody wants to know about us, but they look at him and says money. If you say Mosepe, cash. Make my name great. Please pray this prayer. I came, this is what I came for. This prayer we're praying is what is changing the whole thing. Amen. Am I talking to somebody? Amen. Amen. Look at the blessing Jacob blessed his sons. He said, may the God of Israel. His name was Jacob before. He knew that the Jacob can't stand anymore. Because they've not changed their prince. He said, may the God of this prince bless you. The God of Israel. If you like, be Lebanon, be Kenya, fight Israel, you crumble. Because of the blessing on the name. Every day you wake up, don't ask God for too many things. In humility, say, Father, make my name great. Oh, simple, don't force it, don't even chakamaka. My name great. Just tell him, make my name great. When they look for you, my man of God, they will look for your name. Where's Lucas? Where's this? Where's Joe? Where's this? It's name they used to identify you. Make my name great. If you open a shop, people must know that. that hey, before they analyze you, they know your shop already. Pick and pay. Do you know who owns it? Do you know the man? Checkers. Do you know him? You, you, but you know checkers? Uh-huh. Uh, that's what we're talking about. Are you ready to pray? Yeah. After this, I begin to release grace. Halimo Hosu Adabaha. It's about to happen. It's about to happen. It's about to happen. Come and tell the Lord to make your name great. Make my name great, O Lord. Hey, Yabaha Labaha. Rebele Bosuke Bele Bele Bele. Yeri Mama Masata Labade. Yeri Mama Mama Sheli Bosu Labade. Make my name great. Make my name great. Just like you did for Abraham. Just like you did for Jesus. Make my name great, oh God. Put greatness behind my name. Put greatness behind my name, my God. Put greatness behind my name, oh God. Yeribo Sukabade. Resalima Salabadabade. Yere Telebo Sukabade Kadea. Yeah, 
Yabaha, Yea Yabaha, Lebro Sukabade, make my name great, make my name great in the nations of the world, around the universe. Whoever fights my name, fight the person for me. Whoever is against my name, be against the person for me. Don't make my name great, spread my name around the world. Let them know that I serve you. Let them know. That I'm a man of God. Let them know that I worship you. Make my name great around the world, around the nations. Make my name great. Spread my name. Spread my name. Spread my name. Name of Hosua. Riba la babadeya la badaya. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. The presence of God is heavy here. You can feel it already. That there is there is a heat, a spiritual heat. I lift my voice as a prophet. Father, you ask me to gather men. I have gathered them. I say I have gathered them. I say I have gathered them. Lirisi li kama kuru kutu sukapatea. Repoto mi pa liro tese gede gogoya. Yo na hande ke le ke boko du pa la daya. I come against them now in the name of Jesus. I come against them in the name of Jesus. The voice that said you will not succeed. I ask fire to burn them in the name of Jesus. The family that said you will not rise. They will see you rise in front of them in the name of Jesus. I sound as a voice. I battle them for you in the name of Jesus. Anywhere they have paid your destiny, I lose your destiny now in the name of Jesus. Anywhere they have paid your finances, I lose your finances in the name of Jesus. Anywhere they have paid your peace, I lose your peace in the name of Jesus. Heavens are open for you. Heavens are open for your business. Heaven open for your destiny. Heaven open in the walls of your hands. Be blessed in the name of Jesus. I bless you in the name of Jesus. I bless you in the name of Jesus. I bless you in the name of Jesus. I bless your business in the name of Jesus. I bless your destiny in the name of Jesus. Be blessed. 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 Be I call you blessed. You must not change. Bring that young man for me. You must not change. The Bible says when they say confederacy, don't say confederacy. When they call themselves broke, don't call yourself broke. When they say they are not rising, hear me. One of the graces in which you receive a blessing from a nation it's never to talk against that nation. Yeah. That's what God told me some 20 years ago. He said, do you want to eat of this land? Never ever curse this land or talk evil against this land. When they say people are killing, don't join them. When they say things are hard, don't join them. 
When they say, don't ever join them. He said, what you cost will not produce for you. Please let me listen for me. Let them say what they want to say. This land, <laughs> there's gold. This land. There is gold in this land. And the gold is gold. Hallelujah. Indians come, they take. Chinese come, they take. Americans come, they take. We were here talking. Complaining. This country, this country, stop it. From today. Are you listening to me? You need a yes. When you wake up, tell the land to give you gold. Amen. <laughs> tell the land to give you money. This land, it has money now. Yes. You understand? Gupta said, complete Gupta, Gupta. They have planes. They have push cars. You are here. They ran back to India. But they still took the money. Yeah? People are talking. Yeah, 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 making noise. But they came and they saw they conquered. You will conquer. Hey. Don't be stressed. Yes. When they say build house, find house and build. Yes. Don't say I'm traveling. Traveling where? Build. The day you want to relocate yourself, carry your money and go. Yes. Uh -huh. Am I talking to somebody? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Invest in the land. Yes. If you don't plant something in the land, the land can't give you. Yes. My son here is planted in the land. Yes. If he wants to go to holiday, he can go to Zimbabwe and do holiday. But he's benefiting from it. I'm benefiting. Am I talking to somebody? I lose you. I lose you. I lose you. In the name of Jesus, every power holding you down. Go. Go. It's a rich man. It's a blessed man. You have caged his finances. You have caged his destiny. I command you to go. That's it. It goes. Go. Go. Everything changes now. Go. 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 Go! Come on! Go! Lose him everywhere you're holding him. Come on, I say, lose him. Lose his money. Lose his destiny. Because I said so. It goes. It goes. 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 It goes. Goes. Hallelujah. We. We, we need to take an offering. We don't need to take an offering. We need to take an offering. This one is Father's offering. This one is for me to go and chop. And chop as a father. You understand? I've blessed. Uh, uh, I know men's ministry are thinking I'll give them this one. It's not for the men, please. This one is Father's blessing. Okay, when well you can. So get me things. And don't give me an offering. Give me a venison. Give me... Don't just give me offering. I don't need an offering. Give me venison. Put something. Let your father eat. Uh, if you want to write check, write check. Connect. Ne? Connect. With it. it's, it's a mystery. It's a mystery. It's a mystery. It's a mystery. Take, take a seed in your hand and speak to it. Say, I plant it into my father's life. And it's going to come back hundredfold. Come on, take something in your hand. Take something, take something, take something reasonable, and then speak to it, speak to it. Say, I, I plant it into my father's life. I plant it, you plant it. I plant it. You plant it. You plant it. You plant it. And as you plant it, I, let there be a hundredfold, a thousandfold return. It's not going to be wasted. It's not going to be wasted. It's not going to be wasted. Thank you, Lord. For as much of them that have lifted their hands to give, to sow and plant, let this be a point of contact. As they connect with the grace of my life, may they never go dry. May they never lack again. May there be an unction in their lives to function. In Jesus' mighty name. Okay, just receive, just receive, receive. If you want to send a check or write something later that you don't have now, put it on Sunday and say for Dr. Ida Peter's side. 
and uh, we will receive it. Or you send it to my PA, or you call my PA for an account details for you to wire whatever you need to wire. You need to connect. You need to connect. And as a member of this family, you must keep to your responsibility. You cannot stop tithing. You tithe to your house. You can't stop tithing. You don't hold back. You don't hold back. Everything God gives to you, 10% belongs to him. And once you are faithful in little things, God will put much more in your hands. Amen, somebody? Amen. Lift your hands. Um, Joe, you want to say anything? I want to close. I want to close them. Come with me. What do you want to say? I know you want to know. I want to release them as a promise. I'll release them. When are you having your next meeting? So that, listen, you have to, you have to uh, connect. I sent him. You have to connect. Don't, let's not be weak men. Let's, be, let's not send, let's not send a, a 10 and, and 8 come back with bad reports. We are looking for those two, those ones that are saying we are well able. When is your next meeting? Uh, the next Monday. When is next of Monday? The new month, June. Okay, June, the first Monday of the new month. Every first, first Monday. Monday. Every month. Please, as you come, you are still connecting to me. It is important we support the men. We want to see the men. We want to see, hey, look at the women. We want to see the men. We are doing this and we are getting involved there. We are doing this. We are, hey, you know, a, a young man called me from Nigeria. I said, where are you going? He said, I'm running to church. I said, what is that? I said, he said, we're in the men's ministry. I said, what are you doing? He said, no, we're men. We're cooking for the church. I said, what are you cooking? He said, no, we feed the church every Sunday as men. Amen. I said, ah, oh, okay. But he crossed me. I said, how many, of, how many are you? He said, 2,500 people. Bring God's power to the nations, changing lives, bringing elevation.